Hey there folks, Sim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy. You know, one of the questions that I feel like more people should be asking, especially those of you out there who are new to instructional design and e-learning development, it's how should you be organizing and saving your project files, right? Especially if you work on a team or you're working collaboratively with people, you want to have a place where you have all of your project files cleanly organized. That way, anybody's able to find them. Now, before I jump in and show you how we do this, let me tell you a quick story. Early in my career, I remember I took over this team of instructional designers. And one of the first things that we did is we all got together in a conference room and I wanted them to show me, where do you save all of your project files? How do you organize them, right? And I remember everyone looked at me and they gave me this weird look and they're like, Tim, we don't save anything, right? We just, we build our projects, we publish it or whatever they're doing with it, and then we just delete it, right? Why would we ever need that, right? I, I literally had to scoop myself up off the floor when I heard that, that they didn't save anything. And those who did, they saved them on their own OneDrive or on their desktop, it was, it was all over the place, right? You don't wanna do that, you wanna avoid that. You wanna have a really good system in place for organizing your instructional design and e-learning development files. And that's what I'm gonna show you here in this video. So let's jump over to my computer here. And I have um, a project folder or file opened up from a project that I recently worked on with a client here. And there's a lot of different folders and files here. I've made them all really big so it's easy to see. Now for this particular project, this was an e-learning development project uh, specifically in Articulate Storyline. Now before I break this down and show you what all of these different folders mean and the intention behind why I save my files the way that I do, let me say this. There's no standard for how to save and organize your project files. Your 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 goal is to create a, a convention, right? Or a way that you save files in a way that you and whoever you're working with or whoever might need to collaborate on these in the future can understand. For me, like I save all of my stuff on Dropbox and I am a so persnickety about how I organize and save my files, I oftentimes dream that one day when we are all extinct thousands and millions of years from now, aliens are going to be, you know, going through our remains and they're going to come across my Dropbox folder and they're going to learn everything about me in e-learning design and development and instructional design through my wonderfully organized Dropbox folder, right? You don't need to go to that extreme, but you want to have a way that you organize your stuff. All right, so here is this project folder. This is, um, like I said, an e-learning development project that was built in Articulate Storyline. So I think the first thing that I wanna point out here, obviously, is the Storyline file. You always, always, always want to save the editable .story file if you happen to be using Storyline or whatever authoring tool you're using, you always wanna be able to save the editable version of that, whether it's Camtasia, Captivate, or whatever the case might be. Because you never know when you're gonna to have to go back and make edits to it in the future, right? So I have that here, easy to access, right? Then over here, you'll also notice that I have a Word document, which is my storyboard document. This is another one that you wanna save, right? Again, you never know when you're gonna to need to go back and make edits, so usually having the storyboard here um, is a really good best practice. Now, does the storyboard reflect the final version of the course? It may, it may not. Usually I try, once, I've, once I'm done finishing a project, I will go back and try to make the storyboard reflect the final version of the project for two main reasons. The first reason is, in the future when you do need to make updates to the project, it's nice to be able to just send the storyboard to your subject matter experts or whoever reviewed the project so that they can just read through the storyboard and make updates and edits there rather than sitting through the entire course. The second reason is you never know when like the legal department's gonna come knock on your door and they're gonna say, hey, we need to review you know, what training such and such employee received, right? And I will tell you from experience, lawyers do not wanna sit through your e-learning course. It would be much better to send them a Word document that they can read and scan that reflects all of the content in the course, right? So I always like to save the, story, um, the storyboard in addition to the editable storyline file. Now, um, up here we have a bunch of different folders. We have archive, audio, graphics, planning, documents. I think the first place I'll go into is the archive folder. Like I said a moment ago, I'm pretty persnickety about saving all of my files. I save everything. And when I'm in development of a project, I will save every version of that project that I work on because you never know when you're gonna need to revert back to something that you created earlier, right? So you'll see I have version one and version two of the storyline file. I also have version one, version two of the storyboard document that you know we went back and forth on and edited. So every time I send, you know, a particular draft off for review, 
I will duplicate the files, the storyline file, the storyboard file, anything else that I'm going to be making edits to. I will duplicate it and implement those edits to that next version of that project. Because once again, you know, if I'm going from version one to version two, you never know when I might need to revert back to something I did in version one. Because if there's one thing I know to be true, subject matter experts, reviewers, stakeholders, they love to change their minds, right? So you want to save all of that. Now it's up to you whether or not after you're done with the project, do you keep this stuff? totally up to you. I keep everything because I'm kind of a hoarder in that sense. Okay, now everything else we have here, audio, graphics, planning documents, these are, you know, pr project files that you use during uh, the development of the project, right? I always like to keep any planning documents, project plans, timelines, if I'm, you know, using it as a file um, that I'm saving on my computer, the design document, the needs analysis, review cycle notes, anything that went into the planning of the project, I will keep that in a dedicated file folder. Again, you never know when you're going to need to come back to that. And then we have our audio and graphics here. I'll jump into graphics first. Um, you know, again, how you organize your graphics is really a matter of preference. I usually will order or organize my graphics into what they were. Some people organize them according to what slide they were on. So for example, you know, I have my character graphics here. These are all the characters that I used and I have some other assets in here. Um, or I have my introduction graphics. These are all the graphics that were used on the introduction slide of the project. I also have their own archive file in here if I'm making edits and whatnot. Um, I have my opening screen, that sort of stuff. And the other thing too that I'll save in here if I go back into the introduction graphics is you'll also notice I have these source graphics here, right? So in, in this particular project, I got a lot of these graphics from an online graphics asset store in Vato Elements. And so I will oftentimes save whatever the source file was that, that was downloaded um, separate from the edited version. Because again, I never know if I'm going to need to go back and you know, if I mess up the graphic, maybe I need that source graphic to start all over, right? So you can see the exported graphics here, the Adobe Illustrator file there, so forth and, and whatnot, right? So that's how I organize my graphics. Again, there's no standard there. Whatever makes it easier for you to um, find what you need and organize it in a clean and easy way. The next folder we have here is the audio folder, right? So any audio you use in your course, it's usually helpful to put it all into a single folder. In this particular project, we used an external voiceover artist for all of the audio, um, which is, in my opinion, always preferential to AI audio, but that's a separate video for a separate day. And so you'll notice that I have all of my audio files here. Now, one of the interesting things that I started doing really, really early in my career with all of the courses that I worked on that had audio is that I came up with a naming convention that works for me, especially when I'm developing in a tool like Articulate Storyline. So you'll notice here, um, there's these numbers here, 01 underscore 1 dash 1 underscore 0, 01 under dash 1 dash 2 underscore 0. Let me explain the way I organize my audio files. I also have this Word document here. So let me explain. I'm going to open up this Word document and you'll notice that it looks pretty similar to my storyboard document. But one of the things that I learned is that it's not usually helpful to just go off and send your storyboard to your voiceover artist because when you send something like this, it's like, what is, what is it that they need to actually record for the voiceover, right? Is it the audio narration? That seems pretty clear, clear here. But you know, there's a lot of other stuff here that I do not want them to get distracted with. And then on slides like this, you know, slide three here, we have some audio narration. And then if I continue down here, we have uh, different bits of audio for different slide layers, right? So I, 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 des I determined that I needed to find a way, an easy way to indicate to my voiceover artist, you know, which files need to be recorded or which bits of audio need to be recorded and exported separately as their own audio files. So what I started doing is I started, you know, once I finalized my storyboard and it was ready for recording, I would extract all of my audio narration out of the storyboard and I would put it in a simplified document like this where we have a table with the audio and then I clearly stated what the audio file name was, right? And then the, any notes to the narrator, whether that was, you know, pronunciation notes or something along those lines. Now, as for that naming, convention. Let me explain that. So the naming convention indicates to me as the developer what scene, slide, and layer each audio file goes to, right? So if you're familiar with Articulate Storyline, projects are organized into scenes, which are like chapters of a book, slides like pages in a chapter, and then slide layers, which is like a whole nother thing that has nothing to do with books. But the way it works here is we have 01, so scene one, 
one dash one, slide one dash one, and if it's a zero there, it means it's the base layer audio. So we come down here, scene one, slide 1.2, base layer, because it's zero. Now let's continue down here. Zero one, scene one, slide 1.3, zero, so forth and so on. I'm gonna keep going down here. And you'll actually notice here, there's a good example. Scene one, 1.3, zero. Scene one, 1 1.31. Scene one, 1.32. So each one of these, one and two, are the slide layers, right? And if I continue all the way down here, we're down to, oh, this project was all in one scene, right? Um, but it would be, you know, scene two, 2.1, so forth and so on, right? So that makes it really easy for me. Once I get back all of these audio files from the narrator, I know exactly what scene, slide, and layer they're associated with, and I can just plug it right in uh, into my project so I can sync up that audio, right? So that makes it super, super easy to organize those files. All right, and then the final file that I have here is the SCORM file, right? The published out SCORM file from Articulate Storyline. I always like to save that because you never know if you're testing, you need to upload, reload, whatever the case might be. It's usually nice to have that so that you don't have to open up and publish out from Storyline uh, once again. Now, before we wrap up this video, I wanna talk real quickly about not just how you organize your files, but saving your files, right? This particular file here, I have saved on my desktop. You don't wanna do that. You don't wanna be saving stuff locally on your computer. You should be backing that stuff up to the cloud or to your network drive uh, in some sort of shared space for you and your team. Now, for me, as a freelancer, I don't have a team, so I save and sync all of my stuff to Dropbox. So everything's saved on Dropbox and it automatically syncs to my computer, so if I add something to this, it's gonna sync it right to the cloud. That makes it super easy. The only thing you wanna be aware of, especially for those of you out there who might be using Articulate Storyline, is that you don't wanna be editing your Storyline files while it lives on the cloud or on your network drive, because that can corrupt the file. So whenever you're working on a Project, it's usually helpful to like take the storyline file, bring it to your local computer, open it, edit it there, and then put it right back onto your network drive into your project folder. Think of it like taking a book off of a bookshelf, opening it up on your desk, closing it, putting it back on the bookshelf, right? That way you prevent any corrupt files because trust me, I've lost hours and hours and hours worth of work by not following that. All right. So that's how I organize my e-learning project files, my instructional, instructional design project files. And I wanna know how do you organize or what tips do you have for managing project files and folders? Share your tips down below. Otherwise, I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please me make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and bell button to get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join us inside the e-learning designers academy at elearningacademy.io, where we help new instructional designers and e-learning developers grow their careers by focusing on skills first. Otherwise, my name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.